Hey, Vinyl Community, how's everybody doing? Uh, it's James, coming back at you with a, another video. Um, it's been, I guess, about a week since my last one. And, um, yeah, I, before I do anything, I want to make sure I, I take the time to wish everybody a very happy Easter. Uh, it's Easter weekend, um, I think, around the world. I, I don't think it varies from country to country on Easter. So, um, happy Easter to everybody. Hope everyone's doing great. I know for... Um, younger people, school's out, hopefully a, a little bit of a longer weekend for many of you, and I hope that uh, you're doing something fun, like digging for records, uh, spinning your favorite tunes, and all that good stuff. So thanks for tuning in, it means a lot to me, and we'll get right to it, and hopefully this won't be a terribly long video this week, but I'll do the best I can. But what I've decided to do this week is to... Um, uh, go back to what I did, oh, I guess maybe uh, four or five months ago. Or no, not four or five months. I guess it was about four or five weeks ago and do a ranking video. A and today I'm going to be ranking um, Duran Duran. Um, I'm sure you guys, most of you guys know the name Duran Duran. They've been around since, uh, well, they were formed in 1978, actually. Uh, their album, first album didn't come out until 1981. But they had, uh, you know, three years of kind of formation and getting their look and their sound and whatnot together. So today's video is going to take a look at their 13 studio albums and uh, rank them from least to best. So um, there's a lot to talk about, a lot of material to cover. Just a quick little uh, brief intro about Duran Duran, a highly successful band um, from Birmingham, UK, England. Um, They've sold over 120 million records uh, throughout the world uh, in their 30 plus years of existence and uh, have had many multiple top 10 singles. They've had 14 UK top 10 singles. They've had uh, 21 Billboard Hot 100 singles and uh, again 120 million albums. Not that many acts can say that. So uh, they, they seem to have a lot of uh, staying power and they were part of that big scene in the early to mid-80s of what is commonly referred to as the Second British Invasion, uh, kind of uh, coined by, um, you know, so many bands at that time were coming out of the UK, they were just pouring into America, very similar to when the Beatles and Stones came to uh, the, the US in the 60s, it was the second time that had happened, and it was indeed uh, chaos and frenzy. I was a very young person at the time Duran Duran hit. I think I was 12 years old uh, when Duran Duran hit. And I remember the pandemonia, uh, the chaos, the screaming, and, and whatnot. You know, they were teen idols. And um, while that was short-lived, um, they've gone on to do many, many other things since then. Uh, but they pr pretty much did start out, you know, for lack of a better word, as a boy band. Um, you know, they were very popular with the teenage young people, particularly girls. Uh, but many of the guys liked Duran Duran too because, um, uh, you know, that was a very popular scene at the time. That was a new romantic scene in the UK. The new romantic scene never hit America so much. Well, I suppose it, maybe it did on the coast, but, you know, me being from middle, middle America, I never really felt that scene very much. Um, it was uh, quite different and quite short-lived. Um, probably for the best, but, um, you know, that they were a big, big player in bands like Japan. Duran Duran, ABC, uh, Spandau Ballet, you know, they were, they were all part of that huge British uh, new romantic scene and part of that second British invasion. So, uh, you know, we'll get to it here right now. Uh, but they, uh, to my, in my opinion, Duran Duran were absolute survivors of all of that. They've gone on and continue to make great albums and are planning a new album for 2015. So, um, They've been assigned to five different record labels. EMI Capital was their original, which they were there for 20 years. Since then, it's been a little bit of a, you know, finding their niche again. And um, I think they've done a really good job with some of their later, most current material. So we'll get to that here in the ranking. So um, what we'll do is we'll take the uh, 13 to number one from start to finish. And I'll just give a little bit of a couple little tidbits about each album and why I rank it where I do. Uh, maybe throw in a couple, one or two of my favorite tracks and uh, just show you the album. Now this is going to be multiple formats because uh, some of their catalog is very, very hard to find on vinyl. 
uh, you know, that been around for a long time, and from that period of, say, like, 1988 to, like, mm, 2005, you know, the vinyl was very scarce. I believe every album that they ever put out is available on vinyl, um, with the maybe the possible exclusion of that could be the covers album that they did, but that's going to be in the ranking. But I'm not going to include live albums, compilations, that sort of thing, but it is multiple formats here because, again, a lot of, well, not a lot, but some of their catalog is quite, quite hard to find. I've got a couple rarities, um, always searching for more, uh, but I don't, you know, go out and spend big money for it if I happen to get lucky and stumble across it. That's what I, uh, when I pick it up and I get really excited about that. But I do have a copy of everything in one format or the other, so we'll get right to it. So, starting with the least to best, um, I guess I'll, I'll start out by saying I don't think they've ever really had a terrible album, but the couple of, towards the bottom were on the borderline of that. <laughs> and I'll, I'll just start off with uh, album number 13, and that is from uh, 2000, the year 2000. Um, the turn of the century here, they came up with an album called Pop Trash, and kind of ironically called that because, uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to say it, because it, it, it is their weakest album, in my opinion. Um, it was their one and only, I believe, album on Hollywood Records, um, and it was meant to be a three-album deal at that time, and this one just was a big bomb. There was really no notable singles on this to even talk about. Um, I've never had anything but this CD copy of it, um, just your basic CD here, but um, I'm just going to just pass right over this one because, you know, uh, thankfully they've got many, many other great albums, but 2000's Pop Trash uh, was just not a great album. But uh, one thing about Duran Duran is they've always been very stylist. Uh, very stylistic. They've always had a great look. They've always had a great modern feel. They've always uh, hired pretty beautiful models in their videos, and they've had s exotic um, locations. And uh, you know, they they attracted people like Andy Warhol through the years, and many other great artistic type people because Duran Duran are well known not only for their music but for their image. So um, you can see on the back of this cover, while it's not a great album, uh, they still had that very, very cool uh, British, English, um, laid back, uh, high, highly stylized look and, um, you know, good looking guys. So let's uh, move on here to number 12. And we're kind of unfortunately still in the stinkers here. Um, and this one is in the cassette format that I have because I, I actually found it for 50 cents, 49 cents. And I thought, okay, well, that, that's affordable for me for this album because, again, not that many notable songs on here, if any. And that is 1997's Medazzaland. Um, this really was a chaotic time for Duran Duran. In fact, a lot of people, including myself, had almost kind of written them off thinking, you know, maybe their time is just over. Um, this is just isn't a great album. And, and this was, you know, quite a wait to get to this album because... Um, it was never released in the UK. Um, apparently there was some, some contractual problems and a revolving door of who was in the band, who wasn't in the band, and it really is uh, one of the members of the band, Andy Taylor. Um, I, I guess I should have said in the beginning that Duran Duran was a five-piece band, and many people who know them only from the 80s know them as Simon Laban, lead singer, Nick Rhodes, uh, keyboard, and synthesizer John Taylor a bass and he's a phenomenal bass player so if you get nothing out of this uh, pay attention to John Taylor's bass playing throughout his entire career because he is one outstanding bass player um, and then you've got Roger Taylor no relation uh, on drums and then you had Andy Taylor again no relation he had three Taylors none of them are related and Andy Taylor was the guitarist now Andy Taylor was in and out of the band at this time and I think that was part of the reason why this took so long to get out and part of the reason why perhaps it just didn't take off and it did was never released in the UK um, it's just your basic cassette tape uh, nothing too fancy about it but um, it was never released in the UK even so this one just never saw the light of day so unfortunately number 12 uh, it isn't dead last because there was a pretty cool single on here called Electric Barbarella 
Um, Duran Duran took their name from a film, a Jane Fonda film in the 60s called Barbarella, so I thought it was cool that they uh, actually wrote a song called Electric Barbarella, and it is a cool track. And there's one or, one or two other good songs on this album, so it didn't rank as low as Pop Trash, but not a very notable album. Okay, moving on to number 11, then. Uh, we've got uh, back into the 80s here. This might surprise some of you, but I just never really connected with this record at all. And that is number uh, 11 from 1988, uh, Big Thing. This is when Duran Duran had moved from a five-piece to a three-piece. Uh, Roger Taylor, the drummer, uh, was really burned out. He couldn't handle the touring and, and the chaotic life of rock and roll anymore. And they had done so much uh, from like 1981 to 1986 uh, that uh, you know I think he nearly had a nervous breakdown. Uh, and and then there's Andy Andy Taylor who uh, just was um, you know after their initial success of their first three albums he was really done. Other than, and we'll get to the other than in a little bit, uh, but Big Thing, not a bad album here. You know, now we're getting into some of the good stuff. About half of this album is really quite good. Um, there's some really good songs on here. Let me just go over a couple of them. This was pretty successful, actually. I Don't Want Your Love hit number four in the U.S., and um, All She Wants, a, another song from this album, was a U.K. top ten. I really like the track Too Late Marlene. Uh, and uh, Do You Believe in Shame on the first side, uh, well, I don't have the album, but I have the CD, that was the first side of the album. About half of the other side, uh, the rest of the album, 12-track album here, is actually quite good. So, uh, 1988's Big Thing, three-piece, uh, John Taylor, Simon Laban, and uh, um, Nick Rhodes comprised Duran Duran at that time, so that's probably worth checking out. You know, you can probably get this in the bargain bin for a dollar or two, so CDs are going so cheap these days that, you know, if you have any voids in your in your collection, even the vinyl, you know, if you stumble across that vinyl, it's not going to set you back much. Okay, moving on to number 10, 1995, they did a uh, covers album I mentioned earlier, and it was a wide range of stuff and some really good stuff on it, and some really kind of, eh, yeah, I wonder why they did that one. Uh, and that is 1995's Thank You. Um, this may be, the, this is the one that I was saying may be not available on vinyl. I am not 100% sure of that, but I have never seen it posted in the vinyl community, and I've never seen anyone that's got this on vinyl. I know there's some fans of Duran Duran, um, a Christian, you come to mind, uh, as a big fan of Duran Duran, and, uh, you know, it seems to get a, lo a lot of likes when I post an album from Duran Duran. Even still, you know, I think there's quite a lot of fans of, of the band. But I don't think this was ever released on vinyl. So if I'm wrong about that, let me know. And I'll continue to look for one. But, uh, again, I have the CD, and it's uh, fine for me. It's not a terrific album. About half of it's good. Um, the song, the title track, Thank You... Got up a lot. It's a Led Zeppelin song, as as you will probably guess, and it actually got a lot of high praise from um, Robert Plant and Jimmy Page. You know, uh, Robert Plant. I remember reading in the media that he praised Simon Le Bon as one of the greatest voices in rock and roll, and um, I can't disagree. Simon Le Bon is not only a great singer; he is a great front man, and he's got great showmanship, and uh, he really carries the the load where Nick Rhodes is kind of always behind the scenes, and, you know, John Taylor is just a wonderful musician. Um, the, uh, the look and feel of Duran Duran has always, in my opinion, been carried by Simon Le Bon on vocals. Um, so uh, other than that, the, uh, the big hit on here was White Lines. This is a cover song from, a, I think it's a band. I'm not 100% sure it's a band. Um, but Mel Mel's White Lines was a fairly big hit on here. And then also there's a cover of Lou Reed's Perfect Day on this album that's quite done, quite well done. So again, about half of the songs I like on this and half of them I didn't like so much. So kind of a mixed bag. So that's why it ranks at number 10 out of the 13 studio albums. Okay, now <clears throat> we're going to get to one that may shock a lot of people. Um, but I never really connected with this album even back in the day. And that is number 9 from 1983. Uh, Duran Duran's Seven and the Ragged Tiger. This was their third studio album in three years, and this is when they were at the very, very peak of their success. It was after their first two albums just skyrocketed and did uh, remarkable things, on, particularly in the UK, and in the US, you know, they had some big success as well. And this was a very um, 
what seemed to me very quick album after the huge success of an album we'll get to later. Um, beautiful, beautiful art design on here. The look of the band was just fantastic. This is an image of Duran Duran that many people associate them with. Um, you know, again, very stylized, very 80s, um, you know, very modern. You know, they were not, um, you know, it wasn't Culture Club. You know, it wasn't, um, you know, it was kind of a cross between, um, you know, an ABC Spandau Ballet look. You know, it was a, just a high classy kind of look at the time. Um, but anyway, getting back to the music, um, this album just never did it for me. And until they, they, uh, he, they, they, um, did a remix with Nile Rodgers of the first track on here, The Reflex. If you listen to the album version of The Reflex, it's just kind of like, well, that has a lot of potential, but it just wasn't done as well as it could have been done. Then Nile Rodgers from Chic, Chic got a hold of it, and, you know, he's gone on to do amazing, amazing things. And to this day, he's working with Daft Punk and, you know, uh, getting his old bands back together and releasing solo material. I mean, he's just all over the place. A wonderful producer. He remixed um, The Reflex, and it was released as a single as the remix version, not the album version, and that is the version that was Duran Duran's biggest hit uh, in America. It was their U.S. and U.K. number one, and I think it may have been their only U.S. number one. Maybe it was their only U.K. number one. Um, but other songs on here, New Moon on Monday, Looking for Cracks in the Pavement, uh, Union of the Snake. You know, Union of the Snake was the first single released on this album, and I just never cared for it. I don't know. I'm going to get a lot of messages about, you know, why I don't like this album, and I don't get it. Um, you know, it's probably a very loved album, and it certainly, you know, goes way back into the archives of their, their, their career. But for me, it just... I just tried and tried and tried. I, I love the band so much, and I just could never connect with this album. So, for me, number nine, Seven and the Ragged Tiger, I think they've gone on to do many, many better things than this. And it was a, quite a disappointment from the two albums that came before it. So, anyway, just my opinion. Um, moving on now to <coughs> number eight. Um, this one, I, I actually am going to show you a sealed copy because I am really happy to have it, and it's quite rare. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, from 2007. This is Red Carpet Massacre. Now, I do have a CD. I didn't pull it out because the cover is the same, and you can, as you can see, the album is sealed. This is on a double, double red uh, vinyl, um, and, you know, it's a numbered limited edition. There's only 2,000 of these that ever made, and I got number 1674. Uh, pretty good album here. Uh, Timberland uh, produced this album, and Timberland, you know, you know, not only for his solo stuff, but he's gone on to continue to do amazing things with Justin Timberlake. And, um, a really, really fine album here. Um, uh, this was, uh, you know, kind of, again, in, in an in-between phase, you know, they, they actually had done, finished an entire album that was supposedly called Reportage. And um, Andy Taylor, again, the guitar player, you know, he had a lot of uh, issues with contracts and his cut, and um, there was all kinds of friction in the band, and they abs they just did away with that album. It, to this day, it just doesn't exist. Um, and I had to look it up because I had forgotten the name, but there was an album that was finished that was called Reportage. I don't think it'll ever see the light of day. Um, but that got scrapped, and then they remade an album called Red Carpet Massacre. So, pretty darn good album here. I'd say about three quarters of this is quite good. And again, you can see, you know, they just have a fantastic image. Um, you know, they're just, uh, they always do things really, really classy. Uh, I mean, I guess you could call that classy, but it's just, you know, again, you know, like supermodels and uh, high fashion and, um, you know, Duran Duran's image is such an important part of the, the band itself. So um, we won't spend too much time on that. I was so tempted to open this so I could show you the red vinyl, but I've seen the pictures of it online. It is just your standard uh, red vinyl, and I know this record goes for pretty big money, so I've just decided to keep it sealed for now. I should play it, you know. People always tell me, it's like, records are meant to be played, and I absolutely agree with that. It's just one of those, for whatever reason, I have decided to keep sealed for now. Okay, number seven. Going back to the 80s again. Not a bad album here. This is a really, really good album, but uh, Duran Duran, after Seven and the Ragged Tiger, 
had kind of said, you know, maybe that's it for us. Maybe we just don't have anything left in the tank. And, uh, you know, they had done so much in the span of, say, 1981 to 1986. Um, they had done so, so much that I never thought that we'd get another album from Duran Duran because we had albums like this. Let me show you a couple things real quick. It just seems like it makes most sense to show it to you now because they were all, all five of the members were doing something else in between uh, Seven and the Ragged Tiger and the album I'm going to show you that is in seventh place. Andy Taylor, the guitarist, had a solo album called Thunder. I hated it didn't like it at all. Um, I've got a copy that I paid a whopping two ninety five for, and, uh, you know, that is just to be an absolute completist because this is garbage. Um, and I, I'm sorry if you're a fan of that album. I don't mean to trash it to the point, but there isn't a single memorable song on it. Um, he, they, what, ha, what did work for Andy and John Taylor, though, is they were members of uh, a four-piece with Robert Palmer on vocals. Robert Palmer, Robert Palmer is, was a very uh, established musician, had a large catalog of music at that point, uh, very popular in the 70s and 80s. I've got a lot of his solo stuff, too. Um, but they went on to do uh, Power Station. And you guys will know this one, of course, from the hit single Get It On, Bang A Gong. I actually saw them in live at Red Rocks. Colorado, in Morrison, Colorado, at the Red Rocks Amphitheater Power Station, and they rocked. I mean, they really, really did. This was a really fine, fine moment. Uh, I, this was a great album here, and I think it did very, very well on the charts. So anyway, uh, you can see here that it was Robert, there's Andy Taylor, there's John Taylor, and oops, I've forgotten his name. Um, I'm not sure what his name was, but uh, this was a great four-piece, and this was a great album. Uh, just to show you here quickly, I've got a 12-inch single of Get It On. It's got an extended uh, nine-minute mix of uh, that song, and uh, there might be another song, Get It On uh, 45. It's the uh, single version on the on the other side, but 12-inch uh, single of that. Great, great track. And then um, Simon LeBon and Nick Rhodes, who always have seemed to be the tightest of the group. You know, they always seem to be the best of uh, mates, I guess you could say. They, they've done everything together. They've never gone and done something without each other, um, that I know of anyway. Um, they released an album with the name Arcadia. And this is a mighty fine album, too. One of the best albums in the entire catalog. I'm not including it in the ranking because it, oh, it's not a Duran Duran album. But for all intents and purposes, it, it is Simon Le Bon and Nick, uh, Nick Rhodes. And this is a fantastic album. Uh, there's so many good songs on here. Election Day, Keep Me in the Dark, Goodbye is Forever, The Flame. Um, you know, it's uh, Lady Ice. Just a great, great album. So I would highly recommend that you check this out. Uh, in some, some instances, this is better than many of the albums I'm showing you from Duran Duran. And I do have to, uh, to show you um, Arcadia. This is Election Day, the, the big single from that album, So Red the Rose. I should, sorry, I didn't tell you the item title is Arcadia, So Red the Rose. This was the big single, 12-inch, of Election Day. And again, you know, just very, very stylized. Um, you know, it's very 80s, but, um, you know, at that time, this was the, the look. And, uh, you know, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it. I should have known, but I didn't know that Roger Taylor, the drummer, was also a part of that. But I... It was, you know, these two, these guys, Simon LeBon and Nick Rhodes, I thought were Arcadia, but I, I forgot that the drummer, um, Roger Taylor, was part of that trio as well. So John Taylor and, uh, yeah, John Taylor and Andy Taylor did Power Station. Andy Taylor had that solo album. And then the other three had their stuff. So again, I thought that Duran Duran were done, like everybody at that time thought the Duran Duran were kind of washed up and, and over, but uh, they did come back, obviously. Um, I've already shown you albums since then. Uh, but uh, and number seven is 1986's Notorious. Really fine album here. I really like it very much. Uh, a lot of good songs on here. This was uh, after a three-year break, they came back, and it was just a trio at that point. And like Big Thing, it was just these three guys. It was Simon, Nick, and John. And, um, really, really good album here. Uh, this hit number two in, in the U.S. and number seven in the U.K. Um, again, you know, you can see that they're, they're all married men. 
uh, and they're all happily family guys, but they have always gone with the supermodels and the beautiful women, and oh, you know, it goes way back to their very, very first album that we'll get to in a little bit, where they, you know, got banned by the BBC, you know, for nudity and naked mud wrestling, and, you know, it's just they've always tried to push the envelope a little bit on their image. So 1986, no Notorious is full of great, great tracks. Uh, American Science, Skin Trade, Hold Me, uh, Vertigo, uh, and, and of course the title track, Notorious. So, very fine album here. You can pick it up dirt cheap. It's all over the place. I've got a, a, a copy in Shrink that I paid $10 for, but even still, you know, by today's standard, that's still cheap. So, uh, let's see, where are we at now? Uh, we're up to uh, number six. And I'm going to go to the current date, more or less, and talk about their last studio album here in, at number six. And that is a copy of All You Need Is Now. Another really good album. This came out in 2010. Was this that this was their last studio album? And as you can see, I got a little damage on mine. Unfortunately, I think it came that way. Probably bought it in the mail, and you know how that goes. Um, but uh, 12 tracks again. I'm sorry, 14 tracks. This is an interesting the way they released this. They released it in the U.S. first, which seems to be kind of the way they do things anymore. Um, and it was a uh, a very inexpensive, uh, I think it was six or eight tracks EP on iTunes, and um, they hit number one on iTunes in 15 countries, but I think it was inexpensive, I think it was like five dollars or six dollars, but it did hit number one in, in iTunes in 15 countries, and then about four, five, maybe six months later they released the full version of it uh, in a physical format and then re-released it again on iTunes and it hit number 11 on the Billboard chart at that point. So pretty successful for a band that had been around at that point for nearly 30 years. Um, you know, what can you say? I, I You know, it's it's got a lot of good songs on it. Uh, this is, oh, I should point out that this was produced by someone who's doing quite well right now, by this gentleman by the name of Mark Ronson. Probably why the album is successful, because it's got that Mark Ronson feel to it. And as you may or may not know, Mark Ronson has the number one song in America right now with Bruno Mars, and it's been number one for 13 weeks, and that is, uh, I can't think of the name of the song, uh, Uptown Funk. Uh, so Mark Ronson, he's got a couple other solo albums that, that, that are very, very good. He's more or less a producer, instrumentalist, he, he uh, relies on other people to do the vocals, but uh, he seems to have the magic touch. Uh, I'm not sure if I showed you the gatefold. Just black vinyl on here, nothing too interesting about the sleeves or labels, uh, but it is a double album pressed on 180 gram. Uh, All You Need Is Now, 2010, that comes in at number six. Mighty fine album, so uh, check that out, uh, especially if you're currently enjoying Mark Ronson. Okay, so <clears throat> moving into the top five now, we're talking about some gems. Uh, not that the others weren't, you know, Red Carpet Massacre, Notorious, All You Need Is Now. Those are also really, really good albums. But the top five are kind of hard to rank because they're mm, not equally good. I wouldn't go that far yet. Um, but they're all very strong albums. Uh, and I'm going to start here at number five from 1990. They had a gentleman f by the name of Warren Cucurillo join them on guitars, and it made a world of difference. And he's not all only... A uh, he was a former member of the band called Missing Persons, another successful 80s act. Uh, he was also a very established songwriter, and I think Duran Duran needed that at the time. You know, Andy Taylor on guitars was kind of in and out, and mostly out, and, um, you know, he this guy came around in 1990 and helped write and uh, was a big player in this album, and I think it's a fantastic album, and I want it on vinyl so badly, and I've never, ever found it. I know I could get a copy on the internet. I know I could buy it and get it shipped from the UK or Greece or one of those other exotic places. Um, but I'm just so determined to find one, you know, on my own in the wild. I've never really gone out and bought anything online from Duran Duran. That's why I have so, so many mixed formats here. Um, but I love this album, and if I if I ever could get my hands on a vinyl copy, I would dearly, dearly love it. And uh, we have a record fair coming up in Austin around the end of the month, so fingers crossed I might find one then. Uh, 1990, Liberty. I love this album. I absolutely love it, and it is so underrated in their catalog. This didn't do particularly well. It really faded quick. It, it had one or two 
singles that didn't do very much. It did reach the top ten in the UK, but it f quickly fell off the charts. And kind of the same thing here. This is a really good album, and it's chock full of good songs. And I, 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 I hope I can read this. Uh, Violence of Summer is a fantastic song. The title track, Liberty. Serious is a great song. All Along the Water, and this is all on side one. My Antarctica. I think this tape came from Canada because they tend to go with the black. Um, First Impression, another good song. You know, every song on here, Drowning, uh, Downtown, Read My Lips. Um, this is a really good album, guys. And if you, you kind of dismiss Duran Duran after the 80s, at the turn of the decade in the 90s, this was their first release, and it's quite, quite good. So I can't recommend that one highly enough to you. That Check out Liberty from 1990. That comes in at number five for me. Okay, number four. This was a big comeback for them. This was uh, the time when they decided in 2004, it took a couple years to get it all together, everyone got on board, and they had an actual reunion, a proper reunion, of the original five members. And this was after, oh, oh, I don't know, like a 17-year absence when they hadn't done that as a five-piece, the original five members of Duran Duran. Uh, they came up with an album called Astronaut. And again, I really would love a vinyl copy, but I don't have it, and I think this might be even the most expensive of the lot. Um, it's very hard to come by, but I do have the deluxe CD. came in this little nice little slipcase. came with a uh, CD and a DVD of the uh, tour. A uh, really good album here. Uh, they came back in fine form, and this was a big hit. did very well on the charts. Um, uh, original five members, uh, three years in the making, hit number three in the UK, and hit number 17. A little low, I thought, for a U.S., but, uh, you know, maybe a lot of people had given up on Duran Duran. But this was a big hit, 2004's Astronaut. They had a massive, their biggest world tour of their career came out uh, on the heels of this record. Uh, and it's chucked full of good songs. Um, what Happens Now is a fantastic track, uh, the title track, Astronaut, Taste of Summer, uh, Reach Up for the Sunrise. I mean, that was a big hit in the UK. Uh, didn't do much on the singles chart here, uh, but I like this album a lot, Astronaut. It does come on, a, I believe, a double album, double vinyl, but it goes for really uh, a silly money, and I hope that they do a repressing of it. I uh, hope they do a good repressing of it because I'd really like to have it on, on vinyl. It comes in at my uh, number four in their entire 32-year career. So um, I'd love to have it. Um, but this is, you know, it's a nice uh, collector's uh, CD, DVD. Okay, now we're into the top three, and it, it, this is where I had a little back and forth. Okay, what is my favorite? And, you know, how do they rank, and how do I do it? Um, I did rank at number three a self-titled album. Now you guys have to guess which one. Was it the original, or was it the one from 1993? Because they have two self-titled albums. They have 1981's Duran Duran, and they have 1993's Duran Duran. Okay, I'll give you a second to guess. And in at number three, I'm going to reveal it here. And I hope you guessed wrong. <laughs> it is the 1993 one. Uh... Boy, it's tough because they're both fantastic. This is also commonly referred to as the wedding album. Uh, these are actually pictures of the parents of the band members. Um, this is uh, Dynamite. And I'm really lucky to have a vinyl copy of this one, even though I'm griping I don't have Liberty and I don't have, uh, you know, uh, Astronaut. I, I do have a copy of the wedding album on vinyl, and it's also very scarce. And the few times, a couple times I've played it and posted it in the VC, I always get like, oh my god, I can't believe you have it. Um, you know, it's just a wonderful album. Uh, they were four-piece at that time, and again, you know, I was talking about Warren Cucurillo earlier with Liberty. He wrote a lot of the songs on this album. I know they're, they're all slated as songwriters on this record. Uh, but Warren Cucurillo uh, really was the principal songwriter on this album. And I'm really grateful that Simon and John and Nick allowed that to happen because there's so many great songs on this record. Drowning Man, oh my God. You know, what an amazing song. An Ordinary World, oh, it's just magical. You know, I just absolutely love it. And I will take this one out and show you the inner sleeve because I know it's rare and many of you probably have never seen it. There's one side of the inner sleeve. 
And there's the other. If you've got wonderful eyes that I don't have, you'd be able to read that. And then we've got the actual disc itself. And uh, I can't say my copy is perfect, but it's, it's good enough. <laughs> uh, it's just a very plain, uh, you know, standard EMI label. Nothing too, n nothing too fancy about it, but uh, really flimsy, flimsy vinyl. I mean, it's just, I guess it was that time in 93 where they just kept getting thinner and thinner and thinner. It's like you almost feel like you could break it. you got to be so careful with it. But, um, you know, even, even the, uh, it's a UK copy, but even the... Uh, the outer sleeve is just paper thin. It's like, ooh, be careful. <laughs> don't don't go too crazy with it. So I do cherish it and I do take good care of it. But anyway, um, hit number three in the U.S. Big hit. Hit number six in the U.K. Mm, come on, you guys. This is deserved to be a U.K. number one. They're British, <laughs> but it's a, a great album, and I'm so happy to have a copy on vinyl. I didn't pull out my CD because uh, you know it's really the same cover, so. Y'all don't need to see another CD. I do have a 12-inch single um, of Drowning Man. I, I would really like to have a copy of Ordinary World. I just haven't found one in the wild yet. So if I can get a 12-inch uh, a of Ordinary World, that would be wonderful. But uh, always happy to find some cool Duran Duran stuff. Okay, so number two, number one. What's going to be number one? What's going to be number two? We already knocked out one of their self-titles. There's one left, as you know. And then there's the uh, album that they're probably most associated with. And I, I guess I'll just get right to it. It's very hard to say which is my favorite of the two. Uh, but I'll put number two as their other self-titled album, Duran Duran, uh, from 1981. Going way back, this was their first album in America. And um, it's just an absolute classic album. This classic 80s. It's you know, it just really defined the 80s for me. I was such a big fan of Duran Duran when I was a teenager. I just loved them, and I just thought their music stood out as something so unique and so different. This was the the peak of their new romantic period. Uh, this really is the only album they ever did that would be classified as a new romantics. They even used the word new romantics in one of the songs, Planet Earth. Um, so, you know, every song on here is a beautiful song. The girls on film. That's the, the that's the song that I was talking about that uh, has, um, you know, the naked mud wrestling and got banned by the, the BBC and was heavily ed edited on, on uh, American MTV. Uh, boy, I just looked at the time. I'm way long on this video. Seems like my ranking videos go on forever. Okay, 1981's Duran Duran, self-titled. Classic album, classic 80s. That's number two. Uh, Princess Diana, we all remember her very fondly, labeled Duran Duran at that time her favorite band and coined the phrase the Fab Five. Um, so if you don't like that, you can thank uh, Princess Diana for stealing the Beatles' uh, Fab Four, and she called Duran Duran the Fab Five. So it stuck, and um, you know I'm happy to say that they were a fabulous band. I do have, real quick, I'll show you a uh, different uh, different some different versions of that uh, called Night Romantics. Uh, boy, that was really the peak of their <laughs> new romantic look uh, on the cover of this one. Similar design, it's got some of the same songs but different versions of Girls on Film and uh, does have a song here, Fame, it's a cover song of David Bowie. Um, it's also got a night version of Planet Earth, but look at these guys. That was quite a time in England, I swear. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. The punk rock movement was kind of on its way out, and this whole uh, different feel and look was on its way in. And uh, it didn't last long, but it was must have been a very interesting time to be British. Okay, number one, I won't belabor the point. You all know what it is at this point. It is Duran Duran's Rio. What an absolute classic album, classic cover. Uh, you see this on walls, you see it in, uh, you know, this is a museum piece, quality artwork, and everything about this album is absolutely stunning and beautiful. The videos, the imagery, they took over MTV, they exploded in America. Not, in, not initially, though, because, again, you know, we didn't know in America New Romantics. We didn't have a clue, you know, so it was really the second release of this album that did very well here when it got club play and it became a dance album. Rio, My Own Way, Lonely in Your Nightmare, Hungry Like the Wolf, Hold Back the Rain, New Religion, Last Chance on the Stairway, Save a Prayer, and The Chauffeur. Those are ten songs that I could hear 
until the day I die and never get tired of them. This is uh, an album I fell in love with in 1982, eight, 19, was it 82? Yeah, 1982. And New Music Express labels it the 65th best album of all time. So that's how highly people think of Duran Duran's Rio and why it will always be my number one Duran Duran album. Okay, guys, I am so sorry. I should have looked at the time. I didn't realize I was going at 40 minutes. Um, I hope you'll stick with me. I hope you watch this and fast forward through some of it and, you know, just do the best you can. I apologize. Um, if you just want to check out a few things of Duran Duran, you're absolutely new to them. If you're one of my younger viewers and you think, oh, well, I, you know, you sure like them, maybe I'll check them out. Uh, Arena is a live album. You could try that. This is all 80s stuff. They have a, a comp. This is live, so if live music is your thing, it's great. Uh, they did a song on here called The Wild Boys. It is a studio track, as you can see, the last track on side one, and almost killed the lead singer, Simon Laban, because of the music video. He almost drowned. Look it up. True story. But uh, he came very close to death a couple times in his life because he was also a very accomplished sailor, sails for the British team and almost drowned on that as well. So uh, something about water in this guy, I tell you. Um, they have a couple uh, compilations on CD and uh, probably vinyl as well. One called Decade that really focuses on 80s stuff, but it's studio stuff. This is a little bit better and probably very inexpensive. Uh, Duran Duran's Greatest. It's got 19 tracks and uh, covers everything from the very beginning through uh, Come On Done in 1993. So uh, it's a good uh, 25 years here of history of the band and great tracks, 19 singles more or less. Okay guys, thank you so much. I'm so sorry it went 42 minutes today. Um, but as you can see, I'm pretty passionate about Duran Duran. I'm glad I did this ranking video. Uh, not all their songs, not all their albums are classics, but uh, they have a lot of good stuff. And they've been with me for 30-something years now, and a uh, big part of my musical her heritage and history. And, um, you know, one of the first real loves of, uh, of music that I, that I found. So, um, if it's not your thing, I'm sorry. You probably didn't get this far in the video anyway, so uh, tune in next time, and hopefully I'll get something in there that you like. Uh, but I'm going to sign off for now. Wish everyone again a very happy Easter, happy spinning, happy digging, and um, we'll catch you real soon. Take care, VC. Bye for now.